Okay, let's talk about never starting a problem like this. So some of you are saying, well, what does this mean? And I'm going to show you what this means in just one second. So obviously we're dealing with some sort of equation. This happens to be a quadratic equation, but uh, what I'm gonna be talking about um, applies to more than just quadratic equations. It's kind of a global principle in mathematics. And we wanna uh, basically, what I wanna get across to you here is that we always wanna try to work smarter and not harder, okay? So there's different approaches we can take to solve math problems. You, you know, when with experience, you wanna always take the most efficient uh, uh, paths, right? Things that will lower the probability of us making an error. So I wanna show you um, uh, a, an approach to solving this problem that a lot of students will initially take that is not the way we want to uh, go, okay? And of course, I'll get into the way we do wanna uh, go, and you know, of course, there'll be a bigger principle here that I want to stress, but we're going to get into all that in just one second. But first, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over many years, I've constructed what I'd like to believe is one of the best online video-based math help programs there is. So if you need to take a full, comprehensive, complete online course, I can help you. Or if you need assistance in your class, I can help you out. My program it's very unique because I teach you how to solve the most common uh, problems that you face in middle and high school mathematics. I literally have thousands of problems, all video-based, very detailed explanations on how to solve problems. Nothing's more fr uh, frustrating than getting a bunch of problems and getting some answer key and not knowing how the solution was derived. So if you're interested in my math help program, I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. Now, if you're watching this video, which obviously you are, I'm going to assume that maybe you are currently a math uh, student. Okay, so I want to just tell you, after decades of teaching math, one thing is apparent to me. Those students with the best math notes almost always have the best math grades. Those students that have no math notes, sloppy math notes, unorganized math notes, maybe their dog ate their homework and their math notes. Whatever the situation is, you get the picture. Take a look at your math, note, your math notes. And that's going to be a good indicator on how you're going to do in mathematics, okay? There's just no way you can handle uh, or be successful in advanced math um, or any math without taking great math notes, okay? So this is a great place to start improving if you need to improve uh, with note-taking. And most of us, you know, there's always room for improvement. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I actually offer very detailed, comprehensive math notes. You can find the, those in the description of this video as well. But those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. Okay, so let's get into what I'm talking about here. So never start a problem like this. Well, what does this mean? Well, let's get to it now. Okay, so the whole idea here is, you know, here is, let's just say, this is a math problem, any math problem, okay? We can take different paths to get to the solution. Usually there's a lot of different ways we can go to get to the solution. So we don't wanna take, uh, you know, take this problem and go down this path, right? Now, what does this path mean? This is the long and hard road to get to the solution, <laughs> okay? We always want to try to find the most direct path to the solution, things that limit our time, okay, or that are more direct and decrease the chances of making an error. Now, this comes through experience, but there's some things at this level of math, and I'm kind of talking about algebra and beyond, that, you know, you really need to understand, especially with equations, okay, especially with equations. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, what I'm um, stressing here, okay? So you never want to start a problem like this and this is what I'm talking about. So here we got one half x squared minus three fifths x equals one. We see fractions, right? This is fractions. We got uh, an equation. We got fractions going on. So we're like, okay, we've got a quadratic equation, fractions. What do I do? You know, some of you out there might be have this expression like, oh no, fractions. Oh, then I got a quadratic situation. Uh, and a lot of students will initially, they'll know to, to set this equal to zero. Now, by the way, if you don't know how to solve quadratic equations, then I have plenty of videos on this in my algebra uh, playlist, okay? Um, but this applies to any equation uh, situation, all right? It doesn't have to be a quadratic equation. I could have just a linear equation or any kind of polynomial equation. But what you're gonna do is you wanna set this equal to zero. So we're gonna move this one over to the left-hand side 
And now we got this set equal to zero. It's in standard form. And a lot of students, okay, this just comes from experience, will be like, okay, now this doesn't appear. I can factor this. So I need to use the quadratic uh, formula. Okay, and that is correct. That's good thinking. So they're going to say, okay, my A is one half, my B is negative three fifths, and C is negative one. This is all correct. Okay, this is, you know, this thinking, I need to use a quadratic formula, and my ABC values here is all correct. However, this is uh, not the way you want to start this problem. Okay, uh, you don't want to deal with fractions if, and I'm not saying, I, if you see my other videos, I'm saying you need to get over fraction phobia, all right? Meaning that your fear of fractions. You listen, you know, we have to deal with fractions, uh, but if we don't have to deal with them, let's make our life easier. So when you have an equation, all right, you should try to clear fractions out before you start to get into really the uh, more kind of the details, the more the mechanics, the process of, of equation solving. If you can clear fractions right off the bat, it's almost always better to do that, okay? So yes, I could go ahead and plug all this into the quadratic formula um, and get this correct answer, but that would be tantamount to starting this problem and taking this long road, okay? That's just like, a like you know, that's not good, okay? So how do we approach this problem? Well, again, uh, first things first, first we do need to set this uh, equal to zero, and then what you wanna do is when you have an equation, or right, something like this, and you have fractions involved, the best thing to do is to multiply by the LCD, okay? And when you multiply the entire equation by the LCD, that will clear the fractions. So let's take a look at our denominators. We have two, five, this is just a one, and this is zero. So our LCD, our lowest common denominator, is 10, okay? So if we multiply this entire equation by 10, we're gonna get a new equivalent uh, equation that doesn't have any fractions, okay? And by the way, we love zero in math because we can multiply anything by it, and it is zero, okay? So let's go ahead and see how this works. Oops. All right, so here's our LCD. We're going to multiply everything in the equation by our LCD. So 10 times 1 half gives me 5x squared. Beautiful, okay? So I'm multiplying this way, multiplying this way, this way, and this way. So 10 times uh, negative 3 fifths gives me 6x, okay, or, or 6, okay, or 6x because we have that uh, variable. And then 10 times negative 1 is, of course, uh, 10, or negative 10. And then 10 times 0 is 0. Okay, so now this equation here, if we solve this equation, this is equivalent to solving this equation. Okay, which one would you rather do? Obviously, I don't want to do this one because I'm going to try to avoid fractions because I already know in the quadratic formula, I got a lot of moving parts here. I got a lot of plugging in and, you know, I got to, you know, do a lot of number crunching. So you want to avoid fractions, you know, uh, for that reason. Okay? That's not, you know, uh, you're not being, what's the word? Um, you're not doing this wrong by saying, oh, I don't want to do fractions, you know, like it's not the right thing to do to be like, oh, I, I got, I know how to handle fractions. I'll just go ahead and just plug it in to the quadratic formula. That's taking the long road. We want to take the, the, the shorter, more uh, more direct path. We already have enough number crunching to, to do with the quadratic formula. We don't need to add fractions into the mix if we can avoid it. And you can always avoid it if you have fractions by multiplying by the LCD and clearing things out. Okay, so now or ABC values, and if you're not sure what I'm referring to or uh, ABC values, you want to go ahead and review the quadratic uh, formula or learn it. So our A here is 5, B is negative 6, and C is negative 10, and here is our quadratic formula. Okay, so we just love this thing. This thing is awesome. All right, remember when you uh, face with a quadratic equation, and there's, you know, you can't factor it. You can't take the square root of both sides. Then we break out our secret weapon, which is a quadratic formula. Again, I have a lot of videos on this on my channel in my algebra playlist. So we're going to plug in these values for A, B, and C into this formula. And then we're going to simplify. Now imagine if we were dealing with a bunch of fractions here. We have to square fractions. We would, Then we'll have a complex fraction inside of a radical. It'd just be like a mess, okay? Now... 
Uh, we don't have to be brave, and you know, we have to do is be smart. Okay, remember there's different ways to get to the answer. We want the most direct path uh, to do that. Okay, so let's plug in our A, B, and C values here. So uh, B is negative six, so it's going to be a negative of a negative six. All right. Again, how to solve um, or how to use a quadratic formula. I have plenty of videos on it. I'm just going to quickly go through this so this video is not too long. So I'm plugging in for my B values right here. B is negative six. Being very careful, using parentheses, minus 4A is 5, so that's going to be right there. And then C is negative 10. All right, and of course, everything, I got 2A, so that's going to be 2 times 5. So first thing is I'm going to plug in all my values, make sure I did it correctly, using parentheses, double-checking, before I start to do all this number crunching. Okay, I want to, you know, double, triple check, because if I accidentally plugged in the wrong number or wrong sign, all this work I'm about ready to do would be wrong. And then you would have this situation at the end and, you know, a lot of sad faces. And, oh, man, it's just so frustrating when students do the right, all this work would be correct. However, they plugged in the wrong values. <laughs> I've seen that about 100,000 times over my teaching career. So let's go ahead and uh, start solving this. Okay, so... We're pretty happy with everything plugged in correctly. So minus minus six, that's positive six, plus or minus square root of negative six squared, that's gonna be a positive 36. Now I have a negative times a positive times a negative. This is all gonna be positive, okay? So four times five times 10 will give me 200. So 36 plus 200, okay, two times five is 10. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Yeah, right, so now this is gonna be six, Plus or minus 36 plus 200, 236 over 10. Now I'm going to look for perfect squares. Again, if you don't know what I'm doing, you got to uh, review uh, the quadratic formula, quadratic equations, radicals, etc. So 236 is the same thing as 4 times 59. So I'm going to try to simplify this radical. And because I have this lovely uh, 4 here, that's a perfect square, I can take that out. All right, and again, if you're not quite sure what I'm doing, you, you know, you need to kind of review. The bigger point in this video is how to start this problem okay so you could see i already got enough enough number crunching uh to do um and imagine if we were using fractions here right it would just be crazy all right so i got uh, square root of four times 59 i could take this out as a two so i have six plus or minus two uh, times square root of 59 over 10 i can factor out a two Okay, cross cancel. Again, I'm not going to try to overly explain this, try to teach too much, but this is my final answer. Okay, so we could get to this same answer uh, using uh, the quadratic equation with these values. Okay, we could have uh, done it. All right, but why? You know, why go through all that extra, you know, um, you know, pain, if you will? <laughs> and I'll be, you know, honest with you. Look, listen, you know, it's not. You know, it's not smart, okay? Especially like if you're taking a test or a quiz, you need, you're need you under time pressure, right? You need to be able to do things in the most efficient manner. So don't, you know, uh, forget when you're faced with an equation, if you see an equation and you got fractions, all right, that's a perfect opportunity to simplify by multiplying by the LCD, okay? It's a great technique and uh, almost it's almost always the right thing to do, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this video up. Um, now, if this video helped you in some way or you're entertained by it in some manner, please consider smashing that like button. Also, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for many years. Of course, I love to teach math. I have hundreds and hundreds of videos organized in various playlists on my channel, all for you. But my best uh, uh, work, okay, if you like my teaching style, you'll then you'll love my um uh, math help program for sure. So again, you can check that out if you want. Just follow the links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.